If you were hoping for a guy in his 30s complaining about toys, this is not the video you're looking for. <laughs> Hello there, welcome back to the channel. I am Grand Moff Tony. You know, last week when I was trying to throw together my little next week on the channel section, I realized that I didn't actually have a plan for this week's video. I scheduled out like so carefully for the time that I was away and the time that I was coming back and I thought, oh yeah, that's taken care of. Most of summer is scheduled. Yeah, no, I'd only actually scheduled like the first few videos of summer, and then I apparently ran out of ideas and walked away from it. So that got me thinking, like, what can I talk about this week? And really, something that keeps coming to mind is in, like, an environment where, you know, these figures are getting more and more expensive, and it feels quite often as you're scrolling through Reddit that there isn't much in the community besides people complaining at the moment. <laughs> you know, whether it's, you know, oh, Jesse's helmet's not right, or all oh, these price hikes and why won't they just do the one figure that I want them to do and then I'll stop collecting. And that got me thinking, like, why do I stick with this line? Like, what is it about the Star Wars Black Series figures that keeps me coming back no matter how much the prices go up, no matter how hard it is to find them? What are the things that really keep me invested in this line? In short, what do I love about these toys? Because there must be something, right? Some, there must be something that keeps us coming back. And after sitting down and thinking about it for a couple of minutes, it turned out there were a lot of somethings. So being as I had nothing planned this week, I thought, what a great idea. Why don't I just sit here and just list off some things that I absolutely love about this figure line. The things that like, that keep me coming back, that have me, when I'm opening a figure and I'm going through the box, I find them and I go, ooh, I like that. I'm really glad that that was included. Let's sit here and list those off. Now this isn't going to be a formal like top 10 or even like top 20 list. It's not even particularly in the order of like these are the things I love most and here are the things that I love least. I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to list off some things that came to mind when I was like you know what are the things that make me smile about Black Series figures because clearly it provides me a lot of joy because these things are all over my house. <laughs> They're taking over. And I'm probably really going to get punished by the YouTube algorithm with this because, as we all know, it's negativity that sells on this platform. That's what gets pushed. So a guy sitting in his room talking about things that he loves about Star Wars toys, <laughs> it's not going to do well. So with all that said, come and have a sit down with me and let's talk about some things that I absolutely love about this line. I absolutely love the box art. Like, whether it's the Gregory Titus art or whether it's the Yellow Fly mural design, I think these are absolutely beautiful. Some of these designs, it was the first time that we were seeing animated characters given a kind of live action twist, and I just love it every single time. There's always gonna be a little part of me, because I am an out of box collector, so all the boxes go in the bin, and there is always gonna be a part of me that thinks, maybe I should have held onto those mural pieces. Even if I just cut them off the sides of the box, maybe it would have been a good idea, but something to revisit down the line, but I adore the artwork on these boxes. And you know what? While we're talking about the packaging, that little window in the top that lets light in to the figure, genius. Absolute genius. And to throw some love to the plastic-free packaging, I adore the little wax paper burrito uh, that the figure comes in. And you can't talk about plastic-free packaging without acknowledging that the way that these figures were packed really protected those accessories. I have never had straighter, more perfect lightsaber blades than I have in the plastic free packaging. So that is one thing that I will miss when we go back to the window. I love it when a figure comes with a little companion, like whether it's Cal coming with BD-1 or that C-3PO that came with Babu Frick or all the times that the Mandalorian comes with Grogu or even the little Boglings. Like I just love it when you get an extra little figure in the box that you weren't expecting. Now obviously we can class it as an accessory if you like, but it's a little figure. Like what, what did you you want. You want a, a big full-size box with a tiny little babu frick in the middle? No, 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 no. You're gonna get it as an accessory and I love it. I love it when they've got a little companion figure that goes with them. It just, it brightens my day every time. On a similar line of thought, I loved it when the Bad Batch Omega came with Ruby. Like, what a bizarre inclusion, but it was an inclusion that I absolutely loved. And in the very same line, I, I believe you got Admiral Rampart and he came with the mouse droid. What a great way to get the mouse droid. Now that had been like paywall locked behind a Galaxy's Edge pack for the longest time and I was never going to get it. The only 
only one I had was a little holiday line one that we got. But yeah, a great opportunity to get those figures in the line, and I love a little companion. I love that General Grievous's cape has pockets. Like, that was just a genius inclusion. I know the Grievous figure isn't massively popular. I personally love it. I think it's one of my favourites, and it will never be taken off my desk. I've never had a problem with him standing. I've never had a problem with the scale. But the thing that I love about that figure is the little pockets in the cape for the lightsabers. It always makes me think, like, do I want him posed with the lightsabers? Or do I want to stash them in his little cape pockets? I love that cape. I love the pockets. I love the Grievous figure. I said it. I love the feeling when you complete a squad. Like, whether it's the Delta squad, which was one of the most recent and one of the easiest ones to put together, the Cantina band. I've made no secret of the fact that hunting down the Cantina band has been one of my favourite parts of collecting this line. The Phoenix team. When we moved into Galaxy packaging and we found out not only is Zeb coming, but the entire Phoenix team is getting redone with updates to the faces. Rebels is my favourite Star Wars media, so you better believe I jumped on those. And even the Rogue One team, like, these are figures that came from a time when the Black Series was still finding its feet and it hadn't quite figured out what it was going to do. And you had these older figures and we were always missing Bodhi and then not only do we get photo reel updates, but we get Bodhi. And just that feeling when you get the last member of a squad that you're looking for, when you find it on a shelf, if you can do that, it's unparalleled. Like, the first time I got my Cantina band together on the bookcase, it was just supposed to be so I could shoot some b-roll footage and be done with it. They are still there. They haven't moved. Same with my Delta Squad. I just, I love getting a squad of figures that belong together and keeping them together on a display. I just think it looks fantastic. I love the way that the Deluxe Cobb Vanth's Boba Fett helmet sits really awkwardly on his head. Just to let you know, it's not Boba. Now, this was a genius inclusion. Like, when they were sculpting that hair, they could have just given him helmet hair so the helmet went on. But when we all saw that episode and saw how awkwardly that helmet was sitting, it tells you straight away, this isn't Boba Fett, this is somebody else. And the figure captures that beautifully. And it's a tiny little detail that I've always loved. Speaking of Boba Fett, I love the way that all of the clones that have removable helmets, they are all obviously Tamira Morrison. They're obviously clones, but they've all got a little bit of detail or a little bit of character that sets them all apart. You can't put Rex next to Echo with their helmets off and just go, oh, it's a clone. No, they look completely different. You, you, you've got the clones that have, like, really distinct details, like Wolf's got his missing eye, and, and the Bad Batch are all incredibly unique looking. But looking at them, and even though they came from animation, you can just about see it. Every single clone figure has got that streak of Tamira Morrison, but just looks a little different. They're just a little unique, and I love it. It really captures the idea that they are all their own people. They're not just clones. They are soldiers and they have their own identities. And the Black Series has managed to capture that really without even trying. <laughs> as far as I could tell. We only saw it a couple of times, but I absolutely love the heat gimmick on Dryden Voss's face, where if you either heat it up or you cool it down, I forget which way around it goes, but then you get the lines going across his face, like when he gets angry in the film. And they did the same thing with uh, the C-3PO that came with Babu Frick. You can, again, either heat him up or cool him down, and it turns his eyes red, like when he's translating the Sith script. And it's a beautiful little detail. I just love it. I think it's great. I love the fact that you you can cut the Wampa's arm off. I think that was a genius inclusion. And to go a step further with the Wampa figure, I am so <laughs> pleased that they packaged Luke hanging upside down in the box. As I've said, I'm an out of box collector. I genuinely paused and thought, this looks really cool. I don't know how I'm gonna recreate this. Should I just leave it in the box? It was genius and I loved it. I love the way that BD-1 can hang off of Cal's shoulder. Now this is something that he can do on the old figures and apparently they found a way to do it on the new figure as well. But I just think that's genius. Like, that's where you want BD-1. Like, you can put him on the floor, sure, like, just have him, like, scurrying about, but he just looks so much better when he's perched on Cal's shoulder, because that's where he sits for the game. How else would you know how much health you've got left? We've got to look at the back of BD's head and go, oh, look, I'm in trouble. I love the fact that Darth Maul's lightsaber always comes in two pieces, so that you can choose to either have him with the double-bladed saber, or you can choose to have him after his lightsaber's been cut in half. That reminds me a 
lot of like back in the early days of the Black series when it was like these figures were the definitive versions of these characters because you could use the accessories to recreate any particular moment that you wanted. And that really made me happy with Maul where you got his lightsaber and it's in two pieces and you're probably thinking oh yeah they probably did that for the packaging. I'm pretty sure Cal's double bladed lightsaber doesn't split in half. So I'm just saying it was a brilliant inclusion. I love having Maul having two lightsabers. So yeah, that was a brilliant inclusion. It makes me happy. I love the Dorito stand. This random little accessory that we sometimes get and we sometimes don't get. Most of the time we don't get it. And I think there's an argument to be made that we probably should get stands. But I love this little Dorito stand. It's so unique and it looks so cool. And the fact that it's it's not quite see-through plastic, but it's not massively obvious. Like, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. You can tuck your K2SO's foot in there, and no one would look at it twice. It's a brilliant little stand. It provides so much support. I want more of them. I love the soft goods on the Range Trooper. Incredibly specific, I know. But when I got this guy out of the box, I felt those soft goods, and I was like, oh yeah, that's a pelt. That's a really good pelt. I love it. It's just so detailed, and as a guy who doesn't really like soft goods because of the way it usually sits. I've never had a problem with the soft goods on the Range Trooper. They look great, they're really dynamic, I think it's brilliant. I love it when a figure has an unexpected gem of an accessory, like uh, Maz Kanata coming with the lightsaber box, or Chopper coming with his little rocket booster, or the throne room Kylo Ren coming with that die-cast Kylo helmet. These accessories are incredible. Sometimes I just want to keep them on my shelf and just, just have the accessories out. I don't even need the figure out. But sometimes a figure will come with such a good accessory that you're just blown away. I love the whole concept of the archive line, like revisiting older figures and getting them back into circulation. And, and especially recently where the archive line has been addressing old problems with figures and giving them light retooling here and there to kind of improve them. Absolutely brilliant. I think it's great. It's a, it's a brilliant way to get these figures back out into circulation so that people who missed them the first time round have another shot at them. I owe several figures in my collection to the archive line. Half of my Empire Strikes Back bounty hunters are archived. I love it. I think it's great. This is one that I bring up all the time, but I love Count Dooku's little saber swoosh. Why was it the only time that we saw that accessory in this line? It was fantastic, and what a figure to put it with. The greatest duelist in the galaxy. While we're talking about Count Dooku, I love his cape, and I love the fact that his cape has got not only screen accurate colors, but a screen accurate design where you can fold the cape back over his shoulders exactly the way that he wears it when he's dueling. I think it was a brilliant inclusion. It's a brilliant figure. Hell, I love everything about the Count Dooku figure. I love the little snowy base on the bottom of the Imperial probe droid. That could have been just another random flying base. You know, those see-through pieces of plastic you get that are kind of coned and then they flare out at the bottom and it just looks kind of dull. The snowy base that comes on the probe droid is just great. I mean, what else are you going to have your probe droid flying over? It's, it's going to be snow. It was a brilliant inclusion. I full-on geeked out the first time that I got my three Praetorian guards together and stood them together and looked at how cool they looked. The way that red just bounces out of them, it just looks great. They complement each other so well. I love how the Praetorian guards look together. I love the sheer amount of articulation that you get on some of the line's smallest figures. I got Wicket quite recently, and the level of articulation that you get out of such a tiny figure. I'm glancing over there, because he's over there, I can see him, but it's so cool. And the other Ewoks, I mean, I've got Tebow, I don't quite have uh, Paplu yet, I haven't been able to track him down, but sometimes when this line does small characters, I always feel like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm paying for a full figure and I'm getting a small one. I don't care. I don't care because they put so much care and attention into these little characters. I just want more of them. Give me more. I'm still standing on this hill. I love the holiday line. It's so adorable. I love the holidays, whether it's the Christmas ones or the Halloween ones. I just think they're fantastic. I love 
all of them. I, I will die on this hill. I love these figures so much. I love being able to include just a dash of Star Wars in my holidays because that's really what I'm trying to do like every year. I'm the guy that's like, this is great. How can we include Star Wars in this? Like, how can I incorporate Star Wars into Christmas? I know. How about a bunch of troopers in colorful Christmas sweater repaints? I just think it looks great. I'm so pleased with them. I love absolutely everything about the Mandalorian Ahsoka figure. I love the details. I love the articulation. I love the face printing. I love the lightsabers. I love all of it. Butterfly joints, hidden joints in the knees. It is the best figure they have ever done. And I will die on that hill too. I'm picking two hills. I'm gonna die on both of them. I love the interior detail on the snow speeder because I remember reading somewhere that there wasn't direct references that they could use to pull on this figure when they were designing it. They had to improvise some of it and it all looks so perfectly natural, so in universe, even if it's just storage for those little grenades that Luke has, the inside of this ship is incredible. I love the soft goods on the Gamorrean guard figure. So cool. In the same kind of vein as the range troopers soft goods, that little pelt around his waist just sits so perfectly. I've got the uh, three and three quarter inch scale Gamorrean guard because he came with my Rancor pit set and the soft goods on the smaller figure just kind of flare out lazily. It just looks like a like a hairball. The Black Series Gamorrean Guards pelt, it sits like you want a pelt to sit. And I absolutely love it. I have to seriously fight the urge every time I see a Gamorrean Guard in the wild to not just snatch it up. Oh, my Jabba's Palace could always do with one more Gamorrean Guard. And while we're on the subject of the Piggy Guard, I love the fact that they included an articulated jaw. What a great inclusion. I feel like I'm gonna really, <laughs> I'm really overusing that phrase. What a great inclusion. But it is. It's just someone in the office at the Hasbro said, you know what we should include on this figure? We should have them be able to squeal. And I love it. I really, really like the accordion articulation on the B2 emo figure. That was a two-pack that I was never going to pass on. But when I got him in hand and I realized, oh my god, he goes up and down. I... <laughs> I was so pleased. Random accessory love. I absolutely love Vandor Chewbacca's shotgun. It really stands out because obviously it's not the weapon that you're used to seeing Chewbacca holding. But my god, that thing just looks mean. It looks like something out of Halo. I think it's brilliant. While we're talking about accessories, I love the client's Camtono and I absolutely love everything to do with Zeb's bow rifle. The Camtono was just something that we, we always had to get into the line. I feel like every Star Wars fan out there knows the story about the ice cream machine from The Empire Strikes Back and how it became a cultural icon among Star Wars cosplayers. And now it's in The Mandalorian and I love it. I think it's brilliant and I love to have a little plastic version of it on my shelf. Same goes with Zeb's bow rifle. The fact that they didn't just include one extended one and one collapsed down into a rifle. The fact that you can almost transform as your way from one to the other. It's next level stuff and I think it's fantastic engineering and I will never stop seeing its praises. I'm gonna divide the pool here. I absolutely love Jabba the Hutt's arm mouth gimmick. The little oh, 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 oh. It's fantastic. I absolutely love it and I'm one of those guys who likes to pretend that I don't like silly gimmicks. I remember back in the day when I was collecting Transformers, I got my Shockwave figure and it had this silly little Hyperflux cannon where you pushed a button and it spun round and while I was making my review for it and in the middle of complaining about how silly it was I realized I was utterly transfixed on this cannon spinning round and it's exactly the same with Jabba. I could sit there and make him laugh all day long. It makes me smile. I absolutely love how far on a general level how far the face printing technology has come. We compare figures that we get today and look back at figures that we got 10 years ago. It really is 10 years. And there's no comparison whatsoever. It's so much better now than it ever has been. That's one of those reasons why I can always justify spending a little bit more on a new character when they come out because the face always looks incredible. I absolutely love how reasonably priced the vehicles of this line were back when we were getting them. Sometimes it was just the price of a deluxe figure for a speeder bike or, you know, for 90 odd dollars you got the snow speeder. It's incredible. And, of 
obviously we all know that we're not going to get any more, but I just wanted to say, for my part, they were fantastic value for money. I was very, very happy with them. I love all the little flame and blast effects that we get. I don't usually use them in my displays, but I'm always thinking of like ways that I could incorporate them into a display. Like whether it's the flamethrower effect that comes with Boba Fett sometimes, or whether it's the little barrel flashes that we're going to get with the Cad Bane Cobb Vanth 2 pack. I just love them. I think they're great. They look brilliant. On that subject, I love the 2020 Stormtrooper. Everything about it. Every time we get that figure or any time we get a figure on that mold, you know it's going to be a good one. You know it's going to be a trooper that was worth spending just a little bit more money on because it's got that fantastic articulation. And we're going to finish by talking about articulation again. I love butterfly joints. Anytime they show up in the line, they are brilliant. They always take a figure to the next level. And especially when it's a Jedi, I love it when a Jedi can hold their lightsaber with both hands. There you go. I got a cheeky last one in there. So there you have it. That was 30 odd things off the top of my head that I absolutely love about Star Wars The Black Series. It's my favorite toy line. I will gladly drop any other toy line. I think I'm pretty sure I have dropped every other toy line to just focus on this one. And it's because it knocks it out of the park for me so many times. It keeps me coming back. I'm always going to go looking for those boxes. I love this line so much and I love this community so much. It's been great getting to know people that are just, we're all in the same boat. We're all out here collecting toys and just getting to talk to people about it. There's your secret extra bonus thing that I love about this line. I love all the people that I've met because of it. With all that being said, my collecting is kind of taking a back seat at the moment. In fact, uh, there probably won't be a toy hunt this month and there probably won't even be a fine edition this month because I can count the fine additions to my collection on one finger. It's probably the only one that I'm going to get this month because there's a lot of real life stuff that's going on that needs my attention. You know, my wife and I are finally having our wedding after being married for nearly five years on account of the fact that the end of the world cancelled our actual wedding. And at the same time, I've mentioned a few times on the channel uh, that we are finishing the basement so that I've got somewhere to store my masses of Star Wars toys. And that project is finally starting to move towards completion, which unfortunately means there are a lot of things that need paying for. So there isn't really time in the month to also pop out and go and buy some toys and you know, spend a chunk of money that should be going towards either the wedding or or the basement on a Star Wars toy. Not to mention the fact that we're also just coming off a very, very expensive trip to the UK. So it's it's one of those situations where real life is coming at us from all sides. It's all really exciting. I loved the holiday. I'm really looking forward to the wedding. I cannot wait until my basement is done. So collecting just has to take a back seat every now and then. And you know what? That's how we keep this hobby fun. That's how we keep it as something that we enjoy doing and not as something that stresses us out. Like, I would hate to be like, oh, I know I don't have the money for it, but I'm gonna go on a toy hunt anyway. Oh, oh, I really need that figure. Oh, I don't want to walk away from it. Maybe I'll just recklessly spend some money that I shouldn't. That's bad. Those are red flags. Stay away from those. But just as a little bit of bonus extra content on the end of the video, I'm going to throw in a quick look around our basement so you can see what we're working on. You can see how it's all coming together. Welcome to my basement. Come on down and have a look-see. Now this is just going to be a outdoor storage area. This is all of our decorations that we put out for the holidays. They're going to be stashed behind some doors here and also in here with our utilities, you know, the heating, the water heater, the air conditioning and the sump pump that stops it all from flooding because that would be a disaster. All right. This will be the main bar area, this hastily thrown together little diagram on the floor lets you know where the bar is going to be. This is going to be the cock and ball bar. It's going to be amazing and I love it. We're going to have a pool table over there, a mounted television on the back wall, and a cute little fireplace reading area over in the corner. This is going to be bedroom number four in the house. Uh, it's going to be our guest room. It's got a Cute little fire escape there over in the corner, and there'll probably be some toys or DVDs in here, most likely. 
this will be the main feature of the basement. This is going to be our absolutely massive game room where we're going to put together a large board game table that we can play all of our fun little games on. There's going to be a 10 foot long craft table along the back wall where we can assemble miniatures, paint them, do all sorts of fun stuff. We've got a pressure pot so my wife can make dice. It's going to be great. This is the bit that I'm really excited about because the majority of my Black Series collection is going to be housed in here. We're going to have IKEA shelves as far as the eyes can see over here and some really innovative display ideas that I've been cooking up over the time that I've been collecting. This will be the toilet where you can poop and the shower where you can clean yourself after you've pooped. Underneath the staircase down into the basement, we will be housing a small wine cellar that's going to look really classy and we're really excited about it. And over here, the storage room is the first complete section of the basement. It's the only thing that we've finished. It's not going to have walls on the inside, it's just going to have the backs of walls on the outside. So it's the closest part to success that we have. So, that is our basement. Hopefully you can see why we're so excited about getting it finished. There's going to be a lot of great space for doing some fun stuff down there. So yeah, very exciting stuff. I'm very excited about it. It's one of those things that I cannot wait to show you when it's done. But in order to make sure that I can show you, in order to make sure it does get done, I have to take a backseat on collecting. So, it is what it is. With that being said, we are still going to have a video for you every week. Next week we are returning to the Wishlist series with the one that I've been really looking forward to to because we're finally talking about Star Wars Rebels. Cannot wait to talk about that one. I feel like I got some great picks for it and I just love talking about it because it's my favorite Star Wars media. Until then, I've been Grand Moff Tony. Those were just a few things that I absolutely love about Star Wars The Black Series. You may subscribe when ready. Hang on. Like, I got E... When we go... Hang on. <laughs> mm <clears throat>